All right, in this video, I am going to show you how to do a two-step opt-in uh, process with in FusionSoft and lead pages. And what it looks like is uh, someone fills out their email in one form, uh, as you see here, and we are going to pre-populate that email field on the second form. And once they reach this final thank you page, all of the information of, on both forms will be compiled into one contact record. Uh, this is very, very often I get asked the question, how do I pre-populate or um, how do I uh, get two lead pages in a row, uh, two forms on two lead pages to pre-populate? And this is exactly how you do it. So the very important piece is that this, this image right here <clears throat> is that in Infusionsoft, the form, you have to have this option checked that says pass contacts information into onto the thank you page. If that box is not checked, none of this will work uh, regardless of what platform you're using, lead pages or, or anything. So the reason why I don't have the first web form as a lead page is just because it can really be anything. It doesn't, the first page doesn't have to be a lead page. Um, although I, I don't see why not like a lead box or something like that uh, you could use that but it works with a naked Infusionsoft form it works with any Infusionsoft form so what what happens is you click the submit button and you will see in the URL your email address as a variable past and uh, I can't remember I think it's INF field INF underscore field underscore email and um, your email address is up there. And what lead pages will do is pre-populate the email field with that value from the URL. So when they hit this final submit and take in their take the thank you page, that it is the contact record is fully complete. So, uh, oh, I don't know what happened. Um, what just happened? Yeah. All right, I'm back. Um, so the the requirements here. Are is uh, the email field cannot be hidden in lead pages. It won't pre, it won't submit properly if that field is hidden. Um, the checkbox in Infusionsoft must be checked, and the name of the variable must match the name entered into lead pages. That's probably the most critical step, and I'll show you how slash why in a minute. So let's look at my two pages. So here's my first form. Uh, just a sample lead page and what you'll see in the integration settings are yeah this is absolutely uh, nothing and in the second form you see that I've got more fields uh, filled out so this is my first form it's just gonna grab the email and this is my second form which is gonna ask for the first name last name phone number but we're going to pre-populate the email field so what is <clears throat> what is what you need to do is get the URL of your second uh, so this is the second web form what you need to do is take this URL and put it as the thank you page of the first web form okay so if I'm in Infusionsoft um, and I go right here for this first web form what I want to do is put the thank you page as the URL of my second web form. All right, that's how we're linking them. And remember, the email is the unique identifier. So here it is. This is the URL right here, and I have the checkbox. Like I told you, you need the checkbox. Do not forget this checkbox. It will not work. All right, so with that in mind, uh, I guess let me pause for a second and say, this form is going to be completed. They're going to be added to this sequence. And then once this form is completed, they'll be taken out. So what happens is uh, why a lot of people like this, as well as myself, is that if they fill out the first form, you can use this follow up sequence to remind them to fill out the second form if they have not. If you, if you see that they're still in this sequence. So it's something as simple as wait 15 minutes. You can wait 30 minutes. You can wait an hour say hey did you finish filling out the form you know whatever kind of communication you want to send and send them the link to this uh, second form and just kind of push them through through your campaign um, so anyways the second form is is nothing special it's just all of the fields so at, at this the thank you page of the second form it really doesn't matter what it is um, I just put a random thank you page there 
because we're actually going to, um, I mean, if you have a final thank you page, do, please do it. But for the sake of this uh, tutorial, we didn't need one. So I'm going to publish this. So remember, they're going to fill this out on the first lead page, and then it's going to immediately take them to this form, and they're going to fill this out. So what does this look like in action? So let's, let me, um, let me use a new browser, a new browser in private mode so that, so we'll just go here and enter an email address, Chris Test plus two, tutorial.com because I think I've used one of these tests. And I'll just hit pass my email. Now remember, this should take me to the second form. All right, so here we are on the second form and the field is not pre-populated. Uh, there's a reason for this. I did this on purpose. If I look in the URL, the contact oops, the contact field is clear. The email field is, let's see, contact ID, let's go all the way to, there it is. So the email field is here, but for whatever reason, it's not being pre-populated here. Well, the reason is because remember I said that your the name of the field, which is INF underscore email, here, this one right here, INF underscore field underscore email has got to match, oops, right, it's got to match the name of the email field and what that means is when you're in lead when you're in your second lead page and you click on the button and under these uh, under the form settings you'll see the email field if you click on that look at this pre-populate using the url variable and it's looking for lead pages dash email so you'll just want to erase that and put the name of the field you want to pre-populate so you can put I mean, you can pre-populate the first name, you know, whatever. Whatever you ask for on the first form, you can pre-populate on the second form. But the name of the form field has to match right here um, on the field. So I'll click OK. Remember, I just clicked on, let me, let me do this. I clicked on this button, the, the opt-in button, and I go down to the field I want to pre-populate and make sure it has this value for using the Fusion software. I'm going to select OK and hit Save. And this works. Um, this does not have to be, you know, like in the same session or sequential because now I can go back. Um, now that that's saved, I'll go back to the exact same page and reload it. Now remember, I just changed that setting, so the URL should still be the same. Watch this. Let me just make sure it's still up there. Yep. The field is still up there, right here, INF field, email. But now let's see. Click that, and there it is. So it pre-populated because, remember, <laughs> this, is, this is the trick. If there is a trick, it is this, that when you click the button, you click on the field you want to pre-populate it. Make sure it has the Infusionsoft field name. Um, and that is it. Once you do that, and, and so, so let's look at... Let's look at Infusionsoft. So if I hit reload, if I hit reload, I should see uh, Chris Test 2 in here as a contact. And it should only have my email at this point because remember, I only filled out the first email. So as that's loading, if you remember back at, uh, back in my flowchart that it's not until you submit all of the information on both web forms that the entire contact, uh, the entire contact record will be populated. I'm not sure why my flowchart's not loading, so we will just move on here. And in Infusionsoft, now you can see here it is, Chris Test Plus Two, my tutorial, and I'll click on this. And the only record you should have is my email address should be nothing else um, because I have not filled out the second form yet. 
So right here, no first name, last name, phone number, it's just my email. All right, so with that in mind, let's complete the process. So now it's pre-populated. I'm going to put my name in here. There's Davis. Um, and then I hit submit and it will take me to the thank you page now when I go back inside of Infusionsoft and hit refresh and and there we go I have the first name last name phone number attached uh, to the same contact record now. so after I submitted the second record all of my information was together so as you saw the first the first form only grabbed my email address so uh, I was a, a, a contact record in Infusionsoft and I like like I mentioned I could follow up with communication to prompt them to finish the second form um, that's the that's the important piece uh, and the and the reason the, the conversion reason behind this is because if you put all of those fields on the first field it may just be overwhelming but if you put them if you get their email address up front just ask for one thing the the, the less fields you ask for the higher the conversion rate will be and then put the rest of the forms on the second form that you can easily link to later on in your sequence if they abandon the second form uh, you at least have them as a marketable contact in Infusionsoft and though you may not have all of the other information you can at least you know uh, send email communication to prompt them to continue to move down the phone so that is how you do it in Infusionsoft and uh, in lead pages pre-populating an email field from a, on the second form by passing the email from the first form uh, this like I said this works with any platform now lead pages is flexible enough to work with any platform that you can pass the URL variable in the, the, the URL. And all you need to do is know the name of that variable. And it will pre-populate it. Like I mentioned, if you go in and do your settings in your lead page correctly. So it doesn't have to be INF. If your email provider uh, sends it another way, uh, you know, if it's like email underscore whatever, email underscore one equals, that's what you will put there, and lead pages will pre-populate it. It'll grab it from the URL and just store it down there. Uh, there's some JavaScript that's running in the back, but you don't have to worry about that because all of that is built into lead pages. Another interesting thing to make uh, to make aware of is you can also change the placeholder text here. Uh, this is this should be I, I think uh, this is standard. M most people know that, um, but if I wanted to do email address that's what I would put there and the default value is I can actually put a value in there and, and and where this is important is and this is a whole different tutorial is a hidden field if you have a hidden field um, you can use some like lead source and, and put the value in there of the lead source hard-coded into that landing page or this uh, lead page if you know that you're sending traffic from that lead source there um, I would I would never hard code it I would pass the lead source as the URL variable and pre-populated just like the email address so you as I'm just bringing this up to let you know that it's flexible on any field so if I go here and click OK I can even go to the phone field it says lead pages phone if it's INF underscore field underscore phone one put that there and if you're asking for it on the first lead pay, uh, web form you can grab it on the second web form so uh, and you can chain as many of these web forms together as you want to so you can have a series of five lead pages <laughs> that all ask you know different information and as long as you're passing the email address to each and every one of them through the checkbox in uh, Infusionsoft this will work uh, just fine so I hope this is helpful. I hope this clears up a lot of areas of confusion. If not, comments below. And um, yeah, let me know.